9.3 is now available and we're going to take a look at some of the top features that have been released with 9.3 and there are some additional features in there that are quite useful. Let's jump straight in. So this is the release page for 9.3. We now have enhanced content filtering with CyberSecure. This gives you 100 plus granular content categories powered by Cloudflare. Safe search support for Google, Bing and YouTube. Granular control so you can apply it to networks and individual devices. We now have a customizable block and allow list for personalized filtering and we'll take a look at that in just a second. This is required with 4.3 and an active cyber secure subscription. So if you don't have one of those, you'll be able to do some of it, but not all of it. So stick around as we have a quick look at what those are. We have a revamp system logs and seam integration. This has changed slightly from a previous version. They're looking to standardize the exporting format to CEF for improved integration with external log analysis tools. Uh, they've added a global search filter across all categories, improved category filtering. So it will help you drill down into those logs a little bit easier. And again, we'll take a look at that. And there's a whole bunch of improvements down here. And I'm going to show you some of the more important ones that I think are worthwhile looking at. So the first one is going to be connection details in the port page. We'll have a look at that. We have added support for CNAME DNS records. Now I know this has been asked for for a long time and you do require Unify OS 4.3 with this. So make sure you do have that updated. You have the ability to reset port statistics if you need to do so. There's a whole bunch of improvements and stability to the system itself. And they've enabled a kill switch by default to the new policy based routes. And again, we'll have a look at that one as well. Everything else, there's a few bug fixes down below. I'll leave a link to this down in the description if you want to check it out. So let's jump straight into the first improvement. If you go to settings, policy engine and DNS, you'll see something now when you create an entry, when you click on the drop down, you will see the C name is now available. So in here, you can type in an alias of example.com. So if I wanted to go to unify.insidewire.co.uk, I could put that in here and then change the target to be unify.ui.com and it will automatically redirect it to that location. So so again, this is definitely something that has been asked for a lot and it's now available within Unify OS. Next within here, we have DHCP manager. So if we go to settings, there's an overview button at the top and we can go to DHCP manager. And down here, we have a full list of all your DHCP leases. You can change it to filter down individual networks if you want, and you can have online, offline, dynamic and fixed records. And not only with that, you have the option to export and import leases as well. It exports it as a CSV format. And if you wanted to improve it, so if you took it out from another network and you wanted to import it to your Unify network, you can go ahead and do that. Next is WAN SLA. This came in 9.2, but I think it's a really good feature and I wanna highlight it again in this latest update too. So we can now create new WAN SLAs. You don't have to just rely on what Unify is saying. You can set up separate pings or DNS lookups and you can have ping intervals. You can set your own SLA targets via packet loss, latency, or even jitter. You can set the threshold conditions. So do you want to meet all of them, any of them, or custom? And you can add multiple verification servers. So if you're not just happy with one, you can have two, three, four, five, and you can then set up the priority based on the WAN SLA that you've set up. Here we're taking a look at the new log section. So we can see down here, looking fairly similar to the way the flow section look, it's looking a lot more unified within there. And we can see down here a whole bunch of stuff that's going on in the network. The main thing is this left hand side right here where all the filtering is. So we have a global search at the top, we have a severity, we have a time frame. So if you're looking for a specific window and then we can break down via category, type, and also events. You can then play around with some push notification settings if you want. And the big one is obviously exporting to the Seam server, which takes you to the traffic log section just here. Looking at the port section right here, we can see we have the speed details and how it's all connected and what's connected to it, what network. And you can see when you highlight over, I am zoomed in, so it doesn't look the best on this, but obviously when you're using this at a normal 100%, it would be perfectly fine. But you can see we have reset stats just here. So if you wanted to reset that of a specific port, that's where you would do this. When you go to settings, policy engine and policy based routes, we then have the kill switch and you can see I have one route specifically set right here for all traffic to go through a specific WAN. And then we can set that up here. And then you can see right here, there's the kill switch ticked automatically. And it says this just prevents the devices connecting to the internet if the interface is not available. We have the client devices page. Now we can see again, it looks a little bit more different. We're going with that unified approach. All the filtering is on the left hand side that you can see there's a global search online, offline, or last seen, wireless wired, you can go via access point, broadcast address, VLANs, vendors, radios, Wi-Fi generation, link speeds, 
there's a lot in here that you'll be able to do your filtering with. And finally, the most important one is the content filtering. Now, this has been greatly improved and I'm really excited for this. It is something that's been needing to be tweaked for a little while and I'm so happy that they've done this. So we go to content filtering and we'll see any ones that you've created previously that would be right here and we go to create new and just down here we can then give it a name so test uh, we can select the source network so we can select multiple networks if you wish you can go and do that or you can select the individual devices so you've got the choice between the two we have the ad block on here if you want and then we have the safe search we can turn google bing or youtube you can choose any of them and then we have the filtering type so we have off if you want it off for example we have basic which is adult and malicious filtering and then we have the enhanced option so when you tick this this is something you do need to have the cyber secure for so everything else is automatically included it is just the individual categories that you would need to have with cyber secure and if we scroll down here we have all of these categories hopefully they will be coming through you have all these categories that you can choose from and these are updated daily by cloudflare and then underneath we have the allow and block list. So if you find there's some specific websites that you need to be able to go to, you can add them to your allow list. Or if you find something that's not being filtered, you can go and add it to your block list if you wish. We have then finally at the bottom the scheduling. So always daily, weekly, one time or custom. And that makes content filtering for me, I think a lot easier than it was in previous OSs. One of the big things that you've seen starting to come across all of it, and it is becoming more and more of an integral part, is Alarm Manager. And it's now been introduced to Unify Network. So we can go to the bottom left-hand corner down here and we see Alarm Manager. And we can see there's a bunch in here already. Now, if you have your own logging system and your logging tools, obviously you're going to see that through there. If you click Create Alarm, you have the three different actions that you see across all of them. We have the triggers initially. So we have monitoring tools, so client device connected, disconnected, or high traffic. We have internet, power, security, and there's a lot more in the system. When you click on system, you have VPN, devices, admin, network, and Wi-Fi. The one thing I haven't seen just yet is the ability to have and. So like we saw in Unify Protect, you have the ability to have multiple triggers to trigger something, but we have a single one here at the moment. So maybe something that's coming later on. That being said, there is no specific and, but it allows you to tick multiple of these if you wish to do so so you can go through you can select multiple and then move on to your scope there's an include and exclude so we can choose devices if you want and then we have the notify and we have the webhook so you can choose how you want people to receive these alerts let me know down below what your favorite feature is of the latest 9.3 update as always i'll be bringing you any major updates and any reviews as and when they are released for now this is inside wire and i'll see you in the next one